Though there are many reasons for a boat to sink, there are a handful of reasons that we can pinpoint to try and help you from letting this tragic event happen to you. Because... Look, boats sink. I mean, nobody knows why. Can I show you what I found? We found... Got a little bit of water in it! And I'm sure if you've seen any of the videos of all the boats going in and out of haulover, that there are many times where a boat will sink when the bow of that boat gets stuffed into a wave. Usually just a lack of experience in going in and out of inlets like this or being able to navigate rough water can avoid this issue. If the weather is bad enough, sometimes it's better not to take the boat out at all. Another thing that factors in a lot of times here is when the boat gets way overloaded. This is why the smaller boats that you see sinking with 15 people on board have a placard on them that is supposed to let the operator know how many people can be on board or how much weight the boat can sufficiently support. But this is a gray area because the weight and passenger limits are only legally required for boats under 20 feet. Then boats over 26 feet can get what is called a yacht certification and it's basically up to the user's discretion on how many people can be aboard. So if you are loading up your boat and you notice the water line is only a few inches from the floor of the boat, you are probably overloading the boat and you should consider what exactly your plan is for that day. The next reason that a boat will sink for is an obvious point in time when there is a hole in the boat. Though this can be not so obvious at times, things like a massive crack in the hull from a ground strike can let in enough water to eventually sink the boat under the right conditions. After a simple inspection of the boat, you should be able to find this type of an issue and then you'll want to figure out if you love that boat enough to spend the money to fix the hole in the boat. Something that can happen to any of us but is usually only attributed to new boat owners and operators is simply forgetting to put the drain plug in the boat. Most of the time, this is applicable to boats that are trailered. Because when you trailer a boat, it's one of the main things that you do when putting the boat in and out of the water. But after you've spent some time at the boat ramp putting in and taking out a boat, you'll know that the boat ramp can be a wild place at times. With lots of confusion and frustration and chaos, this simple but vital step in getting the boat in or out of the water can put you in a sticky situation when you make it a few miles away from the ramp and realize the boat is taking on a massive amount of water. For those of us that live near the ocean, we have to worry about the tides. Though down in South Florida, we usually only see about a two to four foot tide swing. There are places in like Alaska and Canada, like the Bay of Fundy, where the tide will swing up to like 45 feet, which is insane when you think about it. I mean, look at this time lapse from all five oceans of one of the docks there in the bay. That's crazy, and you can probably imagine if you didn't properly tie up your boat. You could come back later in the day to find the boat stuck under the dock, tied up too tight, and flipped over and sunk at the bottom of the canal. Which is why you should remember this whenever you are learning how to properly tie up your boat to account for a tide swing. The next reason that a boat will sink is because of a broken through hull or hose. If you've got a busted through hole fitting that's leaking, or you have a hose that goes to your wash down pump, the toilet, live well or fish box, or anything else that is in the boat and below the water line, then the boat will be taking on water and filling up. Once the boat fills up, then down it will go. And this will also account for certain boat models, kind of tying into the next reason, being a deck that doesn't drain overboard. There are many boat models that don't have a really good drainage system built into the boat, like here on our Ocean Master. The deck is well above the waterline and the deck drains straight out the back of the boat with no complications, making it a fairly dry boat that you can leave in the water all the time and not have to worry about it. But that isn't necessarily true though. 
because this boat has a separate issue up here in the front of the boat where this access is to the storage here in the front. You can see that all the water flowing over the deck when it rains can make its way down into this groove here where the hatch is. Then it drains down into the storage locker and once it's down here, the drain in the bottom will go down into the bilge and now every time it rains, the bilge will fill up with water and so we will have to do some work on this a little later on and figure out a way to minimize this issue for this boat. But there are other boat designs and models that don't have to worry about this issue. Because there is no way for the water to get down into the bilge, it keeps the bilge dry. But if there is a way for the water to get down into the bilge, then we need to talk about the last reason why a boat will sink. And that is due to an issue with either the bilge pump or the float switch. Now if we are talking about the drainage issue where if it rains really hard and we get a lot of water making its way down into the bilge, then the float switch is going to be kicking on the bilge pump and pumping the water out. But if it rains for long enough, then the bilge pump can drain down the battery and once the battery dies, the pump isn't going to come on anymore and now the boat is going to fill up with water and sink to the bottom of wherever it is located. Which is probably the number one reason that we see boats sink, being an issue with the bilge pump. If you don't have the drainage issue to worry about, then staying on top of checking the float switch and bilge pump is going to save you the headache of worrying about whether you have a sinking problem or not. This is why I'm a big fan of the simple float switch and bilge pump setup. The all-in-one bilge pumps and the electronic floats, that's just too much for me adding more complexity to the system than there needs to be. I like to have a quick and easy access to the bilge pump with just a caged mechanical float and a large gallon per hour pump. Seeing that we usually leave our boat in the water all year round, it's nice to be able to just get on the boat once a month and open up the access and hit the float switch to hear the bilge pump kick on and then I never even think about it because there's nothing to worry about when you know 100% that the float and pump are operating the way that they should. But we know after being on hundreds of different boats and models and manufacturers, having this access isn't always the case. So let us know in the comment section below whether you have good access to your bilge pump or not, and if you've ever had a boat sink on you. Then check out some of our other videos, hit that like and subscribe button, visit us at bornagainboating.com, and we look forward to seeing you next week. You better have a slap oh, look at it, it is moving. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. yeah, it is, it is moving. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, yeah. He only came in because his nav light stopped working. <laughs> <laughs>